Hey there guys, it's your boy McMix, and well, you asked for another Genshin Impact video, and well, I delivered. So, in this video, we will answer the question of whether MiHoYo will kill any of the playable characters, and then we will look at each and every character we've gotten thus far, and decide what are the odds that they bite the dust later on in the story. As far as I know, MiHoYo has already killed at least one character in their other game, Honkai Impact 3rd. And when it comes to Genshin Impact, the company hasn't shied away from dark themes of loss, sickness, loneliness, and pain. By the time the game is completed, we will probably have upwards of 70 playable characters as well. So, the chances of every single one of them surviving? are kind of slim. So yeah, I think we will see characters die, but now let's speculate on who these characters will be. For those of you who don't know me, I have a degree in English and American literature, and have also studied French and Greek literature. And from my studies, characters in any given narrative die if they fulfill certain criteria. These criteria are 1. Characters die when their arcs are finished and the writers decide to have them pass on. Number two, characters may die in order to conclude their arcs. Usually this is foreshadowed. Characters who have committed hubris or who are criminals, you get what I mean. And then criteria number three, secondary characters may die to progress the plot, motivate the main characters, or invoke pity to the viewers. I will also add an additional criterion, Characters who are warriors or part of military groups have a higher chance of dying simply due to the nature of their occupation. I have divided the characters into a scale going from very unlikely to very likely to die within the game based to the previously mentioned criteria. Characters with minimal chance of dying. These are characters who don't fulfill any of the criteria. Diona, Fischl, Zheng Yang, Chong Yun, Razor, Zhang Ling, Sucrose, Jing Cho, Kli, and Hu Tao. These are very minor characters that are not directly involved with the larger conflict in Teyvat. Canonically speaking, they're also not warriors, so I don't see Zhang Ling, for instance, leaving her position as a chef, or Diona leaving her position as a bartender to go and fight the Abyss Order. Kli is put here since I don't see the Knights of Avonius bringing her with them in a potential war, and her death would not progress the plot in any way. Plus, come on man, it's Kli, she's a child, they can't do this. Characters who are unlikely to die. Amber, Lisa, Mona, and Beidou. These characters are very unlikely to die since they have minimal role in the narrative, but they have a slightly higher chance than the previous group since they either belong in military organizations, i.e. the Knights of Avonius, or are canonically fighters. Let's see, characters who are somewhat likely to die. Barbara, Bennett, Jean, Diluc, Ninghuang, Ganyu, Noel, and Keqing. Now, some of these characters may seem like strange additions here, but let me explain. All these characters fulfill the third criterion secondary characters whose death would progress the plot and affect our protagonists and the world at large. Barbara, Jean, Ninghuan, Noel, and Keqing are some of the most popular citizens of their respective regions, and some of them hold positions of power. So their deaths would either motivate the citizens to battle the abyss, or plunge the regions into chaos. Diluc is placed here since he does have a strong will to protect Monstand, and he likes to do things on his own, so I could see him sacrificing himself in a grand display of courage. Bennett is placed here since his bad luck is notorious, and if Mihoyo really wants to conclude his story in a tragic way, I could see his luck finally running out and him sacrificing himself to save the Traveler. Characters who are likely to die. Xiao, Kaya, Albedo, and Chi Chi. Now, these four characters are placed higher on the list 
since they fulfill the second criterion, and their deaths would actually conclude the respective character arcs. Chi Chi's and Xiao's soul would finally achieve some peace. Albedo would return to the soil from which he came from, assuming he's a homunculus, that is, or he's gonna be taken down by the Traveler when he turns evil and tries to destroy Monstan. Kaya could die when he finally makes his choice between his former homeland, Karanaya, the Abyss, and his current home, Monstand. He's involved in many shady businesses, and listen to this Mona voice line about Kaya. He believes he has made a clean break from his past, but fate will one day catch up to him. And when it does, he will have a major decision to make. That sounds pretty ominous to me. Okay, now we're moving to one of the final groups, characters who have huge death flags over them, and these are characters who are very likely to die by the end of the story. Dvalin, Venti, Zhongli, and all the elemental archons. These characters pretty much fulfill every criterion. Their arcs have concluded leaving them in a state of limbo in the story, where they awkwardly exist, even though most of their powers have been taken from them. I have a personal theory that the story of Genshin Impact will conclude with a cataclysmic event of sorts, or that at some point the existing Archons will have to relinquish all of their powers and be replaced by new deities. In the case of Venti and Dvalin, I could definitely see them sacrificing their lives in a last effort to keep Monstant free. Wait a minute, aren't we forgetting someone? Oh yeah, Child. Child is on a league of his own. I have seen many, and I mean many, Genshin Impact players claim that Child gives off huge death flags. Child being a member of the Fatui and a somewhat unwilling at that, increases the odds that at some point the Harbingers will turn against them, or that he will betray them and find his nemesis. His carefree attitude is also a huge death flag, making it likely that at some point he will bite more than he can chew. I would personally give him a 50-50% chance that he dies. I think there are other characters like the Archons, or Kaya, or Xiao, whose deaths would leave a bigger impact than Child's. Maybe he will get the Darth Vader treatment and be redeemed only to die later. Now, you might want to take these death predictions with a grain of salt, since so far Genshin Impact's story has been relatively squeaky clean and not that dark. I bet money that by the end of the journey, at least one or maybe two characters may have passed away, but honestly, don't expect bodies to start dropping left and right or something. Killing a character would potentially also reduce his value in future banners, so maybe Mihoyo won't be killing more than a couple of them. And that's only later on in the story. I mean, Mihoyo could still kill non-playable characters, NPCs, like, I don't know, maybe Pallid, or one of the annoying and rude Li Yue NPCs, who knows? That's just an idea, Mihoyo, I'm throwing it out there. So what do you guys think? Which of the above characters is gonna die? And how? So what did you guys think of the video? Did I miss or misjudge any of the characters? Leave your comments below, and also if you like my Genshin Impact videos, then check out my Linnae's of Fatui Harbinger theory, or my Sumeru analysis video. As always, hit like and don't forget to smash that subscribe button. If you have any cool ideas about future theories on Genshin Impact, leave them in the comment section down below. Also, if you enjoy these Genshin Impact videos, you may also want to check my other manga and anime related videos. I've done a ton of them about so many series, man, like Vinland Saga, Goblin Slayer, Kenjo no Mago, The Promised Neverland. So yeah, you can check those out as well. And I'll see you in my next Genshin Impact video, guys. Until next time, fellow travelers.